Once the APs have been placed according to the deployment map and connected to the extracom switch, the last step is to configure the switch. Just to recall, in our use case we are deploying a 2.4 GHz 802.11 N channel blanket on radio 1, a 5 GHz 802.11 N channel blanket on radio 2, and a 2.4 GHz 802.11 BG channel blanket for legacy users on radio 3. Configuring the switch to support this is simple. All we need to do is configure the radios, configure ESSIDs, and make sure that our APs have been connected to the switch and are powered up. Extracom switches support web-based management, so to view the management windows, I just need to surf to the switch using a secure browsing session and then log in, which I've already done. So now I'll switch over to the management GUI. The management GUI layout is very straightforward. On the top of the screen is a picture of the switch faceplate that shows port status. On the bottom is a system event display. And on the left is a navigation bar that is used to quickly access the various management windows. In the center is the main information display. To configure the radios, I'll use the wireless LAN wizard. To get to it, I need to click on wireless LAN settings, then radios, and then click on the wizard tab folder. And we'll start from scratch. The first step in the configuration process is to choose the access point type. As you can see, the XRP30N is the default access point type. That's Extracom's 3 radio access point, and that's actually the one that we need for our deployment example. However, I'll show you in the pull down menu that the other access point types are available. Anyway, we'll leave the 30N as the choice and move forward. The next step is to determine if you want rogue AP detection. We don't need it in our example, so I'll hit next again. The third step is blanket type uh, definition. And as we said earlier, we wanted the first channel blanket to be 802.11n running in the 2.4 gigahertz band. We want the second channel blanket to be 802.11n running in the 5 gigahertz band. And finally, the third channel blanket is going to be for legacy users, and so we want to run it as 802.11bg. And now I'll click Next again. Now we're going to uh, skip right through to Step 5. Step 4 is uh, determining true reuse, which we also don't need for our deployment example. By the way, it's a good time to point out that on the right side of the screen, the system keeps a running tab of the choices that we made, so we can always go back if we see something here that we don't like. Anyway, so far so good. So now, step five, uh, additional parameters. Um, I will first do the selection of the lower channel for the first blanket, which I'm going to leave as channel one. Then I going to click on more options which gives me the opportunity to make a number of selections here. Uh, the most important one for me is, is to widen the channel blanket out to 40 megahertz and also I'm going to choose HT only for the 802.11n mode and a 400 nanosecond guard interval as well as MCS 15 as the maximum MCS on this channel blanket and then I'm going to click next which takes me to the second channel blanket definitions and here I'm going to uh, leave it as a uh, lower channel of 36 which is what we expect uh, for the 5 gigahertz band and in terms of the options it's going to be the same as the other channel blanket that we just defined so I'll make the same selections there HT only 400 nanosecond guard width and maximum MCS of 15 I'm going to click on next, which takes me to the third channel blanket, and I will choose here channel 11, which is the remaining uh, non-overlapping channel that we have in the 2.4 gigahertz band, since we used up the other non-overlapping channels for our 40 megahertz N blanket. And 
click on next because everything there was was the way we want it and I can make a last review over here everything looks good click on finish and the system will take me over to the radios tab folder uh, which gives me kind of an at-a-glance view of the radios that I have on the system of course each radio corresponds to a channel blanket and I can see that the selections are exactly what I wanted so the wizards done its job and we're done as far as uh, configuring the radios uh, one more point is that if you want to change anything you can also change it in this tab folder there's no need to go back to the wizard anyway I'll move over to ESSID definition first thing I'll do is add an ESSID for the 802.11n users now below in the in this window I have a number of settings that I can modify. The only setting I'm going to change is I'm going to assign a VLAN tag to this ESSID and then um, I have to choose an encryption type. There are a number of options. For example if I choose WPA WPA2 Enterprise then I this is my opportunity to implement uh, radius server in which case I would go over to also the radius tab folder and define one or more radius servers but I'm going to use a somewhat simpler encryption mode which is WPA WPA2 personal and once I do that then I have the opportunity to enter the pre-shared key and once that's done I can save that and I'll move ahead and enter one more ESSID for the legacy users and again I'm going to just change one uh, option below which is to assign the same VLAN tag to this ESSID I'm going to use the same encryption method but I'm going to put in a different pre-shared key so that I will keep the users for each ESSID from logging in to the other one and I'll save that and now we have our ESSIDs defined now I go over to ESSID assignments and this is a very powerful window in which I can assign the ESSIDs to whatever BSSID I want. So in this case, I'm going to ensure that the 802.11n user group has access only to the 802.11n channel blankets, which are riding on radio 1 and radio 2. And the legacy users, I'm going to allow only access to radio 3, which, as I said before, is set up as 802.11bg. And what's really powerful about this is that I've, I'm able to actually create a separation between the 802.11n and 802.11bg users even within the same band, which is a unique capability of Extracom's channel blanket architecture. So I'll save that. Now I have to go over to the system tools and I will apply the configuration changes okay so the switch has been reconfigured successfully and then I'll go over to take a look at the access points just to make sure that uh, the access points are properly connected and powered up, which they are. So we can see that the four APs that were connected to cover the fourth floor in our deployment are ready to go. And we have 12 more ports available when we want to roll out wireless LAN to the other floors in the building. And that's it. The switch has been configured in just a few minutes and our wireless LAN is now fully operational. It's that easy.